Exorcist Believer is... In 1973, we got THE horror movie, The Exorcist. And 50 years later, we get something that nobody believes in. Directed by David Gordon Green, who also directed the Halloween trilogy that just finished, we are thrust back into a direct sequel to the original Exorcist, but it does not hit the same. 50 years after the original, Victor Fielding tries to save his daughter and her friend when both are taken over by demons, and he does it with the help of Chris McNeil and a ragtag team of Christian Avengers from various denominations. Now, I I liked parts of the movie, disliked a lot of parts, and I'm here to tell you what happens in this movie, how it relates to the original, and some of the ways I find it likable or underwhelming. But listen, if you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue the Gohan. Victor Fielding is a vacationing photographer, putting Haiti in his lenses, celebrating his honeymoon with his proud pregnant wife named Serene. A boy stops Serene, bringing her to a traditional blessing of protection to bless that baby. Ah, nice wholesome spit pedicure. Serene's spidey senses tingle to an earthquake, a direct reference to the earthquake in Haiti back in 2010. Life crumbles in front of Victor, but he blindingly races to save his wife who unfortunately is pinned under rubble. Now Serene whispers to her husband to protect their baby instead of her. The doctors tell Victor that if they try and save his wife, their baby will die. If they try and save the baby, the wife will die. 13 years pass by and we're back in Percy, Georgia. Victor seems to have chose to save the baby who is now 13 year old Angela. Victor's a good daddy, playing around with this big ass baby still playing hide and seek and tricking her with his adult brain. Now this is Catherine, Angela's best friend even across the classroom. Meanwhile, Victor is hitting the punching bags at the gym, kind of like how Father Karras was in the original. After school, Catherine and Angela are trying to become missing persons. I've read far too many unsolved mysteries about going missing in the woods. Catherine bought Angela to the woods so they could perform a seance and talk to Angela's deceased mother. But it would be cooler if I said they are performing alchemy and they're trying to bring her mother back from the dead like full metal alchemist. Victor notices that Angela isn't home, even late into the evening. The girl's parents go looking in the woods to find their daughters, finding the dark underpass that they did the alchemy yet. Victor almost gets his ass bit by a snake, stepping all in rat dookie and snake skins, but he finds his daughter's shoe and the police are called in. Catherine's parents are kind of mean. I get it, your daughter's gone, but they seem like they want to blame Victor so bad. Days pass, and Victor comes home seeing his front door open and some random ass people in his house doing some blessings to bring her back. How about you do those blessings in the woods where she was last seen? Get the hell out of my house! The third day, a random farm boy finds both Angela and Catherine confused inside of their barn, alive and safe. Victor races to reach his daughter, but hey, hey Vic, they are alive. You don't have to endanger everyone else just to see her alive. And both father and daughter embrace. Angela has no idea how long she was gone. She thinks she was only gone for like a few hours. Like Angela, it's been seven years. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's been three days though. These girls got some demons in them and both have wounds on their feet. After various uncomfortable physical tests, the girls start showing signs. Yes, like how Reagan was showing signs in the original movie at the doctor's office. She tells Victor that she wanted to talk to her mom and that she hears her voice all the time. Yeah, that sure looks like mom right there. And Catherine, she's going through the same thing too. Nusferatu trying to be relevant again after SpongeBob. Go get a remake, bro. Really, it was Angela playing around, teleporting and evil staring, the usual kid stuff. Angela is sleeping hard the next morning. She even peed the bed. She's just sleeping to recover her strength like that other demon girl. He ran a bath for her, but she summoned hell waste instead of water. He acts like things are normal around here until Angela blinds him and beats his head on the bed like a drum, screaming and convulsing on the floor. They take her to the doctor and have to give her that go to sleep juice because she went so crazy. They see that she has various wounds on her feet, hands, and body. Meanwhile, Catherine is at her Baptist church being weird while everyone else is happy to see her safe return. During communion, Catherine's father finds her missing, only for her to pop up between the pews like the Antichrist, screaming, Body in the blood! Body in the blood! Now both families team back up, with Catherine's parents thinking the girls are possessed, except 
they actually are correct and not just blaming everything on demons this time. At night, Nurse Anne, who is also Victor's neighbor, talks to the demon inside Angela. The demon knew that Anne was going to be a nun and that she had an abortion. And so Anne gives Victor a book about someone else who went through this hell. But Victor doesn't believe in God anymore, especially after his wife passed away and even more bad things happen. His crisis of faith is even worse than Father Karras's. He reads the book given, which mentions scars written on someone saying, help me. In the original Exorcist, Reagan has scars that said, help me too. So the author of this book is Chris McNeil, the original stressed out parent. After The Exorcist, she became a best-selling author and expert on demonic possessions in all cultures, regardless of religions. The classic Exorcist theme starts to play as Victor goes to meet the famous Chris McNeil. Ah, Chris is all grown up now. She hosts Victor in and they talk about Reagan, but Reagan doesn't talk to her mother anymore after that book about her possession became successful. I understand, but it would've been cool to see mother and daughter team up for this movie. Chris is convinced to team up with Victor to save those kids. Chris gets a look at Angela locked up in the containment room and then Victor brings her to Catherine's house letting this old lady walk around unprotected when a demon is lurking. Chris you're not a spring chicken anymore. Now Chris tries exercising Catherine but Catherine grabs a crucifix and stabs Chris in both her eyes. Chris did not deserve this. Let that lady save the day. All the mess she went through just to lose her eyes? Ugh. And this guy is Father Maddox, who wishes for the bishop's approval in sanctioning an exorcism, but they believe the girls are suffering from mental illness. Hopefully, Chris becomes like Daredevil and can sense evil. She look like Madam Webb. Still, she keeps her hope and tells him, don't give up. No matter the culture or religion, atheist or Christian, if you have faith in each other, you can save your daughters. She tells them to bring people from various denominations and cultures to expel the demons. So we got Father Maddox, the priest, Don Revens, the Baptist pastor, Stuart, who is a Pentecostal priest, and Dr. Beehive, the root work hoodoo healer that was doing blessings earlier. And when you take something, you have to give something in return. She's an alchemist, the root work alchemist. She's even drawing a transmutation circle. They bring Angela and Catherine back to Victor's house for this complex ecumenism exorcism. But Father Maddox tells everyone that the diocese, the group he was trying to convince, won't let him participate in an exorcism because they believe everything is psychological. And so Nurse Anne will take over as the priest. They tie up those stanking girls in the middle of the room and start reciting prayers. Yuck. See, the Baptist priest should have brought the choir and the band with him. That energy can exercise some demons. Tonight, you're going to die. Uh, yeah, that demon ain't it. <laughs> Angela's demon ain't bad, but neither demon touches Reagan's demon voice. The demons taunt Anne for having an abortion, which I thought was very scary psychological manipulation. But then Angela reveals that Victor never wanted her. It turns out that when his wife and baby was in danger, he didn't choose to save the baby, he chose to save his wife. But the wife died regardless, leaving him with the baby. Uh, I wouldn't say he didn't want you, but I understand his choice. It's hard taking care of a baby by yourself. And plus, he raised you pretty good. Seems like he really does love you. The demons tell the adults that they must all choose one girl to live and one girl to die, or both girls die. And suddenly, Father Maddox comes in with a change of heart. It seems like they're about to win now, but then the demons slowly break Father Maddox's neck horrifically. Victor runs to get his wife's scarf and gives it to his daughter, speaking to her within, which works a lot better than prayer in holy water apparently. However, Catherine's father caves, saying he chooses Catherine to stay alive. Angela headbutts her father across the room, and then the demons each float above, similar to how Reagan did before. You get glimpses of the demons in Angela, but it looks like an old hag. Looks like Melisandre true form. Catherine comes back alive for a second only to die. The real Catherine wakes up in hell being dragged below by demons into a fate she doesn't deserve. So it was all a trick. He chose Catherine to stay alive but she ended up being the one who got stuck in hell and Angela is alive back in her body. They try all they can to bring Catherine back, but no luck. Catherine didn't deserve that at all. 
and even crazier is that the police don't arrest anybody when they find a dead priest in the middle of the room. You guys know those extreme movies I usually talk about? Those have happier endings. Sadly, Catherine is gone, suffering a fate she doesn't deserve, and the movie has the nerve to give me this hopeful ending, like it's a hopeful speech. Never give up hope, love life, team up, be humans. Like, no, get out of that. This ain't no good ending, this is the bad ending. Back in the hospital with Chris, a surprising figure creeps into her room. Reagan McNeil in the flesh, who has forgiven her mother. And that is the end of the movie. I feel awkwardly conflicted. I liked that other Christian denominations helped out in one exorcism, but it all felt like a mess. The only thing that seemed to do anything was that damn scarf. I hated Catherine's parents. They were really annoying. To just look at, they were annoying. I thought the demon in the original Exorcist was kind of funny and scary at the same time. The demons in this movie weren't funny or scary. The scariest thing about them is the movie poster. I thought it was cool to see Chris, but she was underused. All she did was show up and get stabbed. Like why ever even bring her in? The movie had a lot going on, but couldn't put the pieces together without looking and feeling weird. Most disturbing moment is when Catherine gets taken down to hell, completely undeserved. This is for the Ted Bundys and the Richard Ramirez, it's not the Catherines. I'm guessing the next movie is gonna have Reagan dig her way to hell personally to save Catherine's soul. Most enjoyable moment was probably seeing the film slowly reveal Chris showing up and having a role. Too bad it felt underutilized. And that's it, Exorcist Believer. Wanna check out the original Exorcist to compare? Got a video on it right here. A lot more scary, a lot more classic, and even kind of funny. Otherwise, you could totally check out this video on Inside, a movie about a pregnant lady who has to fight to survive when a crazy intruder wants to take her baby. Like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe to see more Spooky Rise videos. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.